This Bulls team, man, they love giving us heart attacks out here. Granted, I'm not sure why, but even when the Spurs started making their run, completely erasing the Bulls' 18-point lead in the third quarter, taking a lead of their own, I don't know why, but this was one of the few times where I felt like the Bulls were going to be able to finish this one out. When you're going up against one of the youngest teams in the NBA, one of the worst teams in the league who has a hard time closing out games themselves and just winning games in general, and one of the worst teams in the NBA without their best player, their rookie sensation in Victor Wembanyama. Like as bad as it was for the Bulls to allow this game to be so close, at the end of the day, based on how the Bulls have finished out their most recent wins, those back-to-back -back games against the Hornets and then the Rockets, of course, they faltered at the end of those games, but they responded well despite losing momentum and finished off the game. And I just felt like that was going to be the case in this one. If the Bulls had lost this without Wimby for the Spurs and the Bulls for the most part being healthy with the exception of Patrick Williams and Torrey Craig being out in this game, that would have been absolutely embarrassing, even for it being the second night of a back-to-back. -back. I mean, you have to take care of business and win these types of games. I feel bad for the fans that pay good money to come out and see Wemby play tonight, but it happens. You have to expect that sometimes when going to an NBA game. But first, a quick word from the sponsor today's video, Game Time. Now, if you've ever had the pleasure of going to a game in person, it's truly one of the best experiences you'll ever have as a fan. But sometimes the experience of buying tickets isn't the best. Are you getting a good deal? Are you not getting a good deal? Are the tickets legitimate? How do you know you're not being scammed? I once bought tickets to a baseball game and thought I was getting this killer deal, and when I got there, the view was partially blocked. Well, with Game Time, they take out the guesswork when it comes to buying tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It really is the best place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets. With zone deals, you can pick a section where you want to sit and Game Time will pick the seats for you for big time savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the the difference. So again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Bulls Central for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Bulls Central for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, I think the bigger question is, why do the Bulls continue to do this? Let large leads evaporate in a matter of minutes. We've seen it multiple times already this season, whether it ends in wins or losses for the Bulls. Like, it's one thing if you blow an 18 or 20 point lead over the course of a quarter or two, but losing an 18 point lead in just six minutes. The other night against the Rockets, they blew a 16 point lead in a few minutes. The Warriors, they had a 13 point lead going into halftime. The Warriors took the lead midway through the third quarter and would ultimately outscore the Bulls 48 to 20 in that frame. Same thing happened, but to a lesser extent against the Hornets in the fourth quarter. So why does this keep happening? Well, for tonight, I'm sure fatigue kicked in, you know, played last night in a quick, fast-paced game against the Warriors, flew to San Antonio late last night, got in at 3 a.m., but physical and mental fatigue aside, I do think a lot of it is the Bulls simply playing down to their competition. They take a lead like that for granted against a bad NBA team, they think they've got it, or that even if the team starts making a run, eh, they'll be okay, they'll be able to respond and close out the game. And look, it hasn't mattered that much because even in these games where their opponent had no business being that close, they still wound up winning the game and that's all that matters. But you have to change that mindset and not take your opponent lightly, thinking we've got this game in the bag, we can rest a little bit because we're tired and take our foot off the gas. Nah, you gotta play the full 48 minutes. The NBA doesn't work that way. There is too much talent in this league that any team can beat you on a given night if you fall asleep. The Spurs made it interesting though. They went from shooting the ball terribly to finishing the game shooting 40%, near 40% from three. They were scrappy out there and making the Bulls work on offense like it was a fun game. Way too close for comfort and way too close than it needed to be, but it was entertaining. And I'll go back to last night's game. What's crazy is the Bulls played incredibly well for quarters one, two, and four. You look at the numbers, again, similar output. The Bulls shot the ball very well. They were very efficient, shooting 51% from the field tonight, 44% from three. They did a great job of getting the foul line, something they've desperately needed to improve upon, being 27th in the league in free throw rate. They pushed the pace well, got downhill in transition, moved the ball around the perimeter, generating great shots. The Bulls yet again had 31 assists in this game, took care of the ball, only eight turnovers, crashed the boards, although they gave up way too many second chance opportunities to the Spurs. Luckily for them, the Spurs just didn't capitalize on most of those opportunities. Like really, it was surprising the game was actually this close given how well the Bulls played and the Spurs even led the game with just a few minutes left to go in regulation. Now I actually wanted to start 
with the bench tonight because the Bulls bench points, especially in the first half, were key in getting this team the extra scoring needed to win this game. Io was incredible in this one, turning defense into offense, doing what he does best, getting downhill in a hurry and finishing at the rim, even when a man is trailing right on him. Io was near perfect tonight, shooting eight for nine, three for three from three, 21 points in 29 minutes, a plus seven on the night, big time impact from Io coming off the bench. And then how about Javon Carter? I mentioned it in last night's video, Duke was getting DMPs out of the rotation in favor of Daylon Terry, but came in early tonight in the first quarter and right away started knocking down shots again. Four for nine from three, five for 12 overall. You know, sometimes he still takes these ill-advised transition threes, which I know that's his shot and he's great at sinking those at times, but sometimes it's just not the right moment in the game when no one is below the basket to rebound or guys are getting out on the break and are able to help finish near the basket if you can just find the open man. It's likely why he was starting to get benched a bit because he wasn't hitting anything and it was costing the Bulls. But tonight, 14 points in 24 minutes and he also looked much more engaged defensively. As for the Bulls starters, all five of them scoring in double figures. You know, Zach was quiet tonight when you just look at the box score, but in actually watching the game, it didn't really feel that way. Like, yes, you noticed he wasn't putting up as many shots, but what impressed me or what has been impressing me from Zach most recently is how he's been impacting the game in other ways with his rebounding, his passing, like some of his assists tonight were fire, excellent court vision, good use of the pick and roll with Vucevic. Zach finished the game with another seven assists tonight, the third game in a row where he's had seven or more assists. The last time he did that was back in 2021. Zach also had 10 points and six rebounds and is still showing signs of being active and engaged defensively. Alex Caruso, Alex Caruso was all over the place tonight. That wicked steal towing the sideline and getting a pass out to Iowa to help that run to close out the game. That was just beautiful. He was elite on the defensive end, efficient on offense with his shooting, three for four from three, five rebounds, six assists, two steals, and three blocks. As Stacey King says it, there were five Alex Caruso's out there tonight. Kobe White, not the best game for him, didn't have a single three, uh, but for some of his finishes at the basket, they were phenomenal. Making some layups with his left hand, showing off some hang time, looking like a young Derrick Rose out there in the way that he was finishing around the basket. And then DeMar, 20 points, eight for 19, two for five from three, four rebounds, four assists. But the biggest storyline on this one, it's gotta be Nikola Vucevic, which you hope Vuce would have a big game in this one considering the Spurs were without Wimby, but an efficient night in the paint was 10 for 17, 24 points, 16 rebounds, five assists, and three blocks. But how about that clutch three, that dagger three in the corner, and then the rebound off the Spurs miss on the other possession to really seal it. We needed a clutch game for Vuce, and he showed out to night in a big way for the Bulls in securing the win. The Bulls closing in on 500 now guys and with the Magic losing yet again the Bulls are now only three games behind them for eighth in the East. Don't look now but suddenly the Bulls are only five and a half games back of the four seed. Did not think I would be saying that the way the Bulls started off this season but the Bulls are off tomorrow traveling to Cleveland to take on the Cavs on Martin Luther King Day. Hope you will enjoy the long holiday weekend. As always be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.